Welcome to The Method, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of executive leadership. Tune in as we unlock the secrets to success, one coaching session at a time. Hello, my name is Faith, and I am a CEO and executive coach here at Mishari Method, and I'm so excited to be with you all today on our podcast. Um, the background of our podcast is the whole goal is just to give you a glimpse into the world of coaching here at Mishari Method, whether that's through a proper coaching session or nerding out about business, um, learnings of CEOs and executives from the startup world, um, and just sharing it out as broadly as possible. So uh, with me here today is Jay Berard, CEO of Jagger. Jay, I'd love it if you could introduce yourself. Want to say hello? Of course. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Uh, thanks for having me on the pod. So my name is Jay Berard. I am the... <clears throat> I'm the founder and CEO of Jagger, which is an executive search firm um, that specifically, you know, partners with startups and some of the fastest growing companies in Canada and the U.S. Um, and uh, I've been a Mashari Method coachee for just over six months now. Yeah, Jay does great stuff. I'm sad often that he's not here in the States because then we'd be able to get together a little more often. But, you know, eh, plane rides aren't yeah. so far these days. So um, very good. Well, thank you, Jay. Great. OK, so, you know, the drill. Um, you are in the driver's seat, my friend. So um, if you're ready, let's dive into some coaching. Perfect. I do also, <clears throat> and you can clip this however you want, but I do want to give a special uh, recognition to you and everyone that Mashari Method just, uh, it's the first time I've really been engaged in a formal coaching setup um, where, you know, we've been meeting weekly uh, for a number of months. And, you know, one of the things that's been the most beneficial for my organization has been like the structure around one-on-ones with through Mashari. Like that's obviously something that, you know, you really advocate for. So ever since we started implementing that within the organization, I feel like there's just been a way greater cohesiveness with the team. You know, everyone's more aligned on like the top line goals. And, you know, it's one of those things where I'm sure like busy founders sometimes feel this way where you're like, you're doing everything. Then you're like, okay, like to meet for, you know, 45 to an hour, you know, every two weeks with, you know, five or six people, Sometimes you feel like maybe it's just too much of a time commitment. You're like, oh, like, what are we going to talk about or, or what have you? And like, you almost have this resistance towards the potential energy output or like the time commitment. And then what I found since doing it is it's actually an energy booster. And like, I actually feel way more motivated and um, invested in the business and the people around me after having these conversations. Uh, so, you know, I owe a ton of credit to that as just like one, you know, huge big win since working together. So I just wanted to give you a shout out there. Thank you. Yeah, it's um, it's one of the things about coaching that sometimes it's not as, there are very like quantitative things you can measure, you know, mm -hmm. as outcomes, but hearing this in real time is just one of the greatest gifts and it makes it, I mean, this is the most rewarding job ever, but you know, yeah. specifically seeing you get these wins is the most invigorating, invigorating thing. Yeah. And I think, I think coaching itself is tough to measure because, you know, you have, you have this like relationship with a coach and, you know, you, as the person like sharing either your goals, problems, challenges, whatever, at the end of the day, it's still up to you to go and, and implement those. You know, you have somebody to bounce ideas off of, or maybe come up with plans and strategies, but you have to be the one to go do it. So, you know, that's just one element that I think there's been a very easily measurable benefit to the, the business and everyone around it. So that's, that's how I feel like awesome. Yeah, well, it's also a huge, you're a very humble man, but it's also a huge testament to um, your own sort of, I would say perseverance, right? Because when you've been in the startup world and you're an entrepreneur and you're living that life and the grind for as long as you have, like it can be so easy to um, lose that drive, you know, and yeah. you've got that, that je ne sais quoi that's in, I think it's like the seed and the DNA of all entrepreneurs out there of that get up and go. And so you get so yeah. much credit to my friend for how you well, stick the landing on the stuff you work on. Yeah. And I feel like the, the other thing that I'll say, just like from the relationship that I've had with, with you and Mashari is like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you are kind of doing a lot of the same things many times, you know, you're only I don't have any partners or co-founders or anything like that. So it's like, you are kind of your own accountability person and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes you're just trying to like grow and do something that you've never done before. And you, when you don't have anyone to really talk to in depth or really share, you know, it's, it's nice to have an outlet where you can kind of be like, 
you know, I want to do this, but like, I'm actually not sure how to get there, you know, all those things. So it, it actually helps kind of beat that complacency because when you've found success in doing a certain thing, you can just rinse and repeat that for a long time. But if you want to get to the next level and do something you've never done before, it's great to have an outlet, you know, where you can uh, work with someone to help you set that goal, break it down into steps, and then hold you accountable towards doing those things. So that's, that's another thing that I've found a lot of benefit into. I love that. Yeah. And it's, um, I know you talked about this separately a little bit, but what would you say, is that like the most impactful thing for you overall from coaching or just having the space for you to do this? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think there's like, we can, like when you're in sort of our position, like, you know, you can believe your own lies that you tell yourself or like, you can just like fall into the same traps of thinking so many times. And if you don't structure your thoughts, or if you, you know, you just kind of default back into the, I don't know, like the emotional pulls that like, you know, for example, like I found myself many times in the business, cause I do a lot of things um, in the business that like emotion, I get pulled to something that's actually not that value add, but I'm just doing it. And then because I'm operating a little bit more of an unstructured way. Um, and then that sure the thing gets done, but it still doesn't, you're not really like focusing on the high level strategy and like how to actually move the business forward. You just kind of end up in the same place that you were or doing the same things that you were doing last year, which is not really a good sign of growth. So yeah, I would say like having that outlet um, and having somebody to talk to about really structuring down, not even just the goals, but like, why are those the goals? Like, why is that the, why do you want to do that? And, um, and then having someone that can call you on your, you know, call you on your bullshit or call you on uh, the, the sort of things that you tell yourself is, is also really helpful because if it's just your family and friends, the end of the day, like they have their own things and like, they're not, they're just like, they're there to be supportive. So they can just be like, yeah, I, I totally see. And they just kind of go along with what you're saying. But when you have somebody that can kind of challenge you and been there before, or like has a different lens, cause they've also helped other businesses and other founders and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. I found that that's been like the most valuable because you get to, you also can see trends of thoughts and like, you know, there's a lot of context and points of relatability that you can use to like help your clients like myself, you know, better operate their business, think about things, grow, all that kind of stuff. Hmm. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate the, the shout out and the moment of just swimming in all the goodness. <laughs> sure. That's yeah, no, I thought yet. it's a perfect, it's a perfect uh, medium to do so. So, Hey, look at that. Season the moment. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of, do you want to dive in? Let's do it. What is something that's top of mind for you today? Where do you want to start? Well, I think for me, there's like, uh, ever since we started working together, it's been all about operationalizing the business. So yeah. how we've gotten to where we've got to today is like, you know, obviously it's a recruiting business. So you got to find clients, you have to find the people, you have to find the job, right? So find the clients, find the spec, find the candidates for the spec, make sure everybody has a great experience, client service, candidate experience, all that kind of stuff. And started the business myself, I did everything. And then, you know, still do a lot of things within the business. And when we started working together, the the thing that I've done really well is like I've, I've gotten my team more involved in like the delivery on when we get a new client or a search and they've been doing a fantastic job and you know their skill sets and their experience has grown, which is again, all super important within the business. And then from a business development and origination perspective, right? Because you need both levers sort of growing if you're going to really grow the business. Our industry is more predicated to, you know, the greater economy than I probably used to think. So obviously the last two years have been like amazing and, you know, it's kind of just grown out of control, not without its challenges, but then this year has been a little bit more of a tailor back year and, um, and also an opportunity to kind of reassess. And it's not just like running 150%. It's more like we're running 90% and we have opportunities to uh, improve the business and what have you. So for me, where we're at today is, um, you know, slow starts the year, good bounce back in the second quarter. Uh, again, I have a fantastic team of people, fantastic clients, like everything's amazing. But some of those clients that were good for like maybe five, six searches a year, now they're maybe going to use this for one, or maybe they're going to pause hiring for the rest of the year. And something I've always been very, uh, one of my, I guess like one of my best skills has always been the business development side. I've always done that, trying to find new clients to, to bring into the business. Um, and that's like the thing that's most important right now is because of the software market, you really need to be, uh, 
uh, active on trying to find new relationships. And what I'm trying to get to now in the next stage of my business is I'm really trying to have my team be able to do that as well, or maybe hiring a or like building out a true business development team rather than having like myself and like recruiters or full desk recruiters. So I'm kind of in this like, you know, super opportunistic phase of the business where I have an amazing team on delivery. So if we get any new business, it's like, they're going to, they're going to have an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And then if all the business development falls on me, which it doesn't necessarily, but certainly if I'm not doing a lot of the activity, it, I, I feel like it's only a matter of time before we fill those roles. And then my team's going to be like, Hey, where's the work? So I need to really build up that function to be a little bit more robust without my involvement. Because mm -hmm. what I found that's happened over time as my responsibilities have evolved, I just don't have as much time or as much focus energy to be specifically focused on this thing that I've done so many time and time again for so many years. So with that, um, that's the top of mind for me is figuring out the second, the second side of the function with the best possible system, um, the best possible motivation for people to be going after it. Um, and, uh, uh, and just like making sure that we're putting ourselves in the best position and not missing out on opportunities. Because the last thing I'll say about that is with how my time has been spread out and everyone else on my team has been spread out. There's like, I can tell you, there's probably a week or two weeks that go by where like not a single person has hit anything new has not like reached out. And in this environment, all of our competition, that's all they're doing. Cause like they're, they're facing some of the same things. So it's like, the last two years have been amazing, but they've, they've also taught us some things on that are not so great. Right. So getting a little bit more complacent, being a little bit more, um, uh, expecting of inflows, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I just really want to build up this robust business development engine that doesn't need my involvement, even though I will be involved. Yeah. Okay. Cause it sounds like, I mean, this is, this is a great problem to have right? This is scaling in its purest form. You have, you took it zero to one. You've built this incredible team around you. Now you have this incredibly capable um, number of people around you with all the skills needed to do well in their role. And you're evolving as a leader and the company's evolving over time. And mm -hmm. so you're looking for the way to keep that scale going, keep that growth going in a way that continues to motivate your team and set everybody up for success with the best systems um, and processes so that yeah. you can do less of that hands-on work and more on the stuff. That's really the kind of thing that you're only you are best suited to do as CEO. Am I getting you? Yep. And again, the, the, it's like we talked about the zero to one process. It's like still living in that mode, right? Like, like I have this tendency to do a lot of things or like, or like the systems that we have, they could be, it just could be a little bit more systematic, a little bit more, you know, um, like it's a little bit less, like I kind of fly by the seat sometimes, I'm a bit of a cowboy. It works for me. It doesn't work for everyone else. So I just, I feel like in order for us to get to the next level of our business, we really need that part figured out. And again, to your point, the team needs to be motivated. I feel like this is, it's an industry where, you know, when things are going well, or you have a lot to work on, it's like the best. And mm -hmm. when you don't, it's like the worst because recruiting is very emotional and very challenging. If you're, if your whole goal is to connect, you know, a company that isn't a company, it's a bunch of people, right? So it could be like a leadership team. It could be whoever's involved in the interview process with a candidate where you're searching based on the skill set that they tell you that they need you will spend a lot of time, energy conversations, you know, trying to make a match on those connections, but it's different than like, say a real estate where you can say, here's this house, it's this much square footage. It's like, those are finite details. And, and also the house isn't going to change its mind. The house isn't going to have something happen to it from a personal perspective that changes why they would, you know, change the curse. All those things are what people have to deal with in the recruiting industry from like a, I guess like more of a stress perspective or just like an uncertainty. And so when you only have like one or two searches to work on that, it hurts that much more. Whereas if you have, you know, five to 10 or whatever, it's just flowing. And like those things will happen. A company will, you know, pause their search or um, change direction on like, if they want to hire that role anymore 
or the candidate will, you know, take a counter offer and stay put. Those hurt a lot more when you have limit, like limited searches. And then it's only a matter of time where if you're not involved, like if your responsibility is not to then also find more clients, if you're just kind of on delivery over time, that would just like wear on you and you would be bored. You'd be like, okay, well, I don't really want to do this like anymore. So that's where if we, if, 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 for example, let's say that in the future, I'm less involved on the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. side of things, but that part hasn't been solved. Well, unfortunately, like we can rely on all of the clients that we've obviously worked with over the seven years of working together, but you still always need to kind of keep going after it. And that's why it's like critical for us to not only grow the business, but also I think be a business for the next 10 years. It's like that part really needs to get yeah. solved. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it sounds like there's two pieces to it, right? There's the, how do you systematize it? Like hand off stuff from yourself to your team to keep them motivated, to keep them growing and to provide that upward mobility. And how do you also do the biz dev piece of growing the company, figuring out how to do that? Does yeah. that feel like the root of it? Yeah. And also do I, do I, um, cause one thing that's, uh, in my business specifically is even the people that have what we call it origination, but even people that have origination responsibilities, they're also really busy on delivery too, cause they're running a full desk. Right. Mm -hmm. So do I pull someone off that and put them into the dedicated full time and say, Hey, we're obviously the, the, the way that you've made money and been compensated will differ to deals and how to all placements and all that kind of stuff, but you'll be focused on this. Or do I say, this is actually a great system. We're working on it, but as this happens, I'm going to build this little business development team. And that's going to look like a, a BDR and maybe an account executive, but like, or I'm just going to hire a bunch of people that can book calls with me. Like, I'm not really sure how I would think about that yet. And sometimes I fall into the trap of like, well, if I'm not doing it, like I should be the one doing, it. like, I always go like, what? no one knows this business in this industry better than me. So like, I should just do it. But then when it comes to like the tactical things of like the things that I've done so many times again, I find that it's more challenging to go back into that mode because mm -hmm. I've like been there, done that so many times, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oops. And that's also part of how you like keep yourself going in the long run, right? As you run the marathon of owning a business, it's like, how do yeah. you find the ways that you feel the most energized from the work that you are doing so that you can still being, uh, being fulfilled from yeah your work and you have a clear purpose and you have all the motivation that comes with that, with your why. Um, yeah. Okay. So many different ways we could take this. Um, it sounds like you're not sure what you're going to do on the biz dev front. And then it sounds like there's, you're mentioning that you're actually getting in there and doing the work yourself because like, this is what we tell ourselves when we've taken it from zero to one, right? We've gotten as far as we have. Well, I know it best. So why don't I just do it? So it sounds like there's, there might be a bit of a bottleneck with you with handing off some of this stuff. Am I getting that right? I, yeah, I would say that the business is obviously something that like I've built and I've like, I've, I've been involved in the success of the business involved in a lot of placements involved in a lot of clients. Like I'm involved. Right. And everyone, every entrepreneur, every founder will tell you that, or they, I hear this from a lot of like just communities I'm in is like, they want to work on the business. They don't want to work in the business. Or like, if you really want to have success at scale, you need to be working on the business rather than working in the business. Well, I don't even know how to work on the business. You know what I mean? Like I am like, sometimes it feels like I am the business, like, and my team is the business. So like we, my default mode of like doing the work is like just going back into like filling a role or like finding a client, right. Rather than sitting on top of it as a function and, and, uh, and, uh, growing it that way. So I think that's where the transition is. Cause otherwise, yeah, I am the, I am the bottleneck of the growth because I tend to just like default to like, well, I'll just do it. And then competing priorities, the things that might not get done or like they can just be done more efficiently and effectively. And then the other thing that I'll say is like from a long-term, like from a uh, growth perspective or just scale of like running this business or like how I see my career evolving, it doesn't feel like I have so, like, I don't have something that, you know, cause we're not really a recurring revenue business, right? It's mm -hmm. like you, every month you're kind of resetting at zero. 
Um, you have repeating relationships, which is great, but that's still just a repeat opportunity to maybe fill a role. So it's very hard to emotionally think about it that way because you all always feel like you could have the best month and then the next month is like slower and then you all of a sudden like have this anxiety about like, we got to get in or we're going to fail, you know? Like it's like this hard thing to really think about it from a systematic perspective. So I'm trying to get there and be comfortable and confident. Um, and the goal that I want to set is um, in October, I'm going to be gone for 30 days in a different time zone. Um, part of it is for this uh, sort of like entrepreneurship group in Mongolia that we're going to. And then my wife's going to join me in Japan for two weeks afterwards. So it's pretty much a, a month gone and not really in the best time zone crossover wise. So I'll be able to commit like four hours per day, which is enough from like dealing with things. But someone once told me that you do not have a business until you can go away for a month and come back to growth. Right. And I don't think I, I don't really think I have that there. I can go away for a month, but it will be like teeter totter. And then, you know, like to the point, like roles will get filled. I'll come back. It'll be low. We'll just build it back up again. And then, you know, just keep that rinse and repeat. So my goal would be, I got two months to really hone in on the, like, obviously the business development has changed a lot too. So how I used to do, like, if I could just riff here a little bit, when I started, it's cold calls. And if you could steal an email, like if you could get someone's email, that was a big deal, right? Calling hundred calls a day. And then if you steal an email, that's like, it lands in their inbox. Like, Oh, how'd you get my email? That's pretty, pretty cool. Right. And then over time, how that changed was obviously all these like email finding tools and like all these platforms that you can find anyone's email at any given point. So my inbox is just flooded and I'm sure everyone else's inbox is flooded with either spam people trying to sell them or value or like valuable emails. And many times, even if it's like remotely could be a value, I'm just swiping left on my phone, like just deleting it. Cause it's like not right now. Right. So the way that business development has been done has changed corporate numbers are less so like, especially in tech, like you can't even really, you can barely call into a company anymore, but you can use tools like Apollo to like get the cell phone number. But like, if I called you on your cell phone number as my first reach out being like, Hey, I'm Jay, I'm a recruiter. Like, I don't really think that lands well. Right. And then when you think about the next layer now, like, uh, like we didn't do any business development for two years. Cause that's how much demand was coming our way, both from referrals and just people being like, we need a good search firm for, well, especially for tech. Uh, and now the uh, generative AI stuff, right? So I used to, one of the things that I used to actually win business on was how well I could write an email. And I still think that there is, that still will win, but all the people that would otherwise be like a four to six out of 10, chat GPT brings them to like a seven or eight out of 10. Mm. And if they, if they're not so, like if you do, you can tell when you have like an AI written email now and those will get deleted. But this is like the psychology of like outbound in today's market, which is like a tougher landscape in general, like tougher economy in general, the game's changed, you know, you need multi, multi-thread touch points. Like it's, it's very involved just to get somebody's attention. And that's what I need to build in the way that's most reflective of our ethos as a company, hmm. not spammy, you know, hmm. exciting. You get a message from us. If it's a great message, you're going to be like, oh, I wonder how they, how they reach out to candidates. Right. So it's like, that's real, why it's really important. Um, so that's what I would say, um, okay. that I need to do in the next two months. That's the goal. Yeah. So you've got a clear goal that you said, um, you've got a business when you can leave for a month and come back to growth. So, um, yes. I'm going to share my screen as I'm starting to take notes here for us. So it sounds like your goal is leave and come back to growth. Does that feel accurate? Yeah, it's, it's funny because I'm almost now running this as a test. Like I'm almost running this as a test where like, you know, can I leave and can we, can my team bring on a handful of new clients while I'm gone, fill all the roles, you know, all that stuff. Okay. So the team like brings on a handful of clients uh, while I'm gone. What else? Uh, what, what would, what would, um, that look like if you left and you came back to growth, what would growth look like? Well, for sure. Like, again, it would just be, um, on the, on the client acquisition side, it would just be like, it could be, it could be something as small per week. Like it could be as simple as like one net new engagement per week of like a client we don't currently work with. It could also be 
um, all of our team, like re-engaging with a current, like either a client that said, come back to me in Q4, like a current account, but originating a search out of that, that would be also growth. I would come back. I would hopefully go into this um, month with everybody full and busy, right? And they're like, pipeline's looking great for everybody individually. Um, and then when I come back, action has happened, placements have happened, but we're also still a robust pipeline that would carry us to the end of the year. That's really where I think I'll feel like, oh, we're all, we're on to something here, given that this could now be like a, every single month and continue to grow through the people rather than just, I'm going to go do it and, and then part mm -hmm. like, you know, so that's how I feel. And the words in, in your wise words, it's rinse and repeatable. Yeah. Yeah. Like a totally rinse and repeatable, scalable. And again, from a business perspective, something, something that I've always a little struggled with a little bit is how we compensate our team is like always predicated on like, so they'll get like a percentage of the placement, right? No different than real estate. If you sell a house, you get a percentage of it. And I've always tried to make it, you know, incentivize the upside. And, and that obviously if you carry most of your, you know, comp on this deal, then you're really tied to it. So when you introduce this new, like a business development arm that doesn't touch any of the searches or whatever, how that all gets chopped up as well. And then again, can that scale out where you still have a great, um, you know, rinse and repeat system that grows also revenue and also bottom line together mm -hmm. and is cohesive. So like, that's the other thing is like, we have such a great culture. I did this and I, I it's funny because hiring for other people, it's like, it's just like managing your own finances. Why you have a financial advisor. When you hire for yourself, you get in front of, you get in your own way. You have your own biases, your own assumptions that lead you astray. I felt so come to them, you know, uh, have in the past and I will in the future. And with my team today, it's such a great team. It's such a great culture that like, it's also very, it's almost like you're, you could be overly cautious of who you bring in. Because mm -hmm. if you bring someone in, they're not working, like they got to go as soon as possible because it's only a matter of time before that starts to shake things up because we are a small team. Mm -hmm. So if I am going to hire someone else, I just need to have like a very, very, very specific um, need, ask expectations and person to come and join, you know, the fan and make sure that. It's... Okay. So it sounds like hiring might be, um, on I feel the like table. hiring is only, it's like, let's get the, let's get the new, newly revamped system first. Let's see if we can do it with the current team. Like, like I pull some, like, let's see if we can have somebody with resources oversee that and everyone is a part of it and see where that goes and you can kind of assess from there but if that doesn't work then it's like i'm going to go the polar opposite which is going to be like let's build just a purely be business development sales function and let's just do that so totally that's how i feel about it okay so this is what the growth would look like is your team is going to bring on a handful of clients while you're gone um yep. basically that bottles that boils down to the revenue of the bottom line growing there's a measurable number of engagements per week. What those engagements look like depends on just kind of the pie, the overall pie of what your, yep. your book of business looks like. Then the team is full and busy. Each individual team member has a strong pipeline. Um, and then we're making a note that like, if you're going to hire, hiring comes second. First, your number one priority is making sure that the system with the current team as is, is optimized and that it's rinsed and repeatable. Yep. We getting you okay good so then and if you do hire in the future it goes without saying you've done a phenomenal job of building this incredible team and this incredible culture right so they have to be whoever you bring on has to be a great fit and an ad a culture ad not a culture depleter so yeah okay so you know me we know what the what is so let's start to feel into the how um what specific and we're talking about systems, right? The team bringing on the handful of clients, having a system there to help them do that. Um, I know you're already giving your team goals, right? So you know that there are measurable numbers that you guys are trying to hit. Everybody knows what they're trying to do on your team. So of these different pieces that we talked about, where do you feel wobbly? Like, where do you want to dig in and see if we can start 
So I'll, I'll give you an example. Like if I'm just talking about business development specifically, mm-hmm. one of the things is I have, again, everyone's great at, if they see an opportunity, they go after it. So it could be simply something as simple as like someone in their network posts that they're looking for uh, a certain role and just a light message. Hey, saw you post this, you know, can we help? A lot of experience space, whatever done. Mm-hmm. When it comes to like out of network or they, there's no context whatsoever. That's where I think those, that kind of messaging and that kind of approach, it's not, I think that's where we're not winning as we used to, because again, if you post a job today, I feel like you're getting 30 to 40 inbounds from recruiters all Mm. saying, we just filled a role in the space. I specialize in the space. We work with this kind of company, blah, right? So it's tough because you get that on your, maybe the best recruiter in the world, but like, that's a lot of noise to get through, right? And without Mm -hmm. the context and the understanding that you would actually deliver, then a lot of people go through their network, right? So, so one would be having different signals, like being able to actually think about the account from a different signal perspective and using the tools that can help you identify that. So we, we lean a lot on like the enterprise and like B2B SaaS space and like some of the sales tactics that go on there, like, again, just like really impressive. And um, so just maybe using some of these new modern tools, learning them inside and out and like having them, having us be coached on them. Because if we nail that part of it, if we're using those tools and like all of our competition isn't, that's going to give us a different angle, right? Mm-hmm. Might not, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to change the outcome, but it'll be a different angle, which I think could be helpful. Um, and then the second piece is that one challenge is thinking about this new potential client as like a true relationship sometimes it's like you hit you reach out to somebody and then they say no and then you kind of like it's like that's like the first step in building your Mm. relationship so just having like again an ethos around that like more account focus than it is uh potential engagement focus like that's how i've always found with business development is like if you you actually want to build a relationship with that person over time you might get the business Whereas a lot of times when you're just going in with the ask and like, can I help you solve this problem? Oh, I don't have the problem right now. Then you just kind of move on to the next and like, just making sure that you're re-engaging and re-nurturing that person. So how do we do that in a way where, again, is it, is it, do we use a, uh, you know, sales engagement tool? Do we use, and, and again, does the person have the time to be able to allocate to that? All these things, right? So that might just, that's maybe why it needs to be a specific person that we hire for that. Um, and then, uh, other than that, what what I love about the team and everything like that is everybody knows how to pitch the company. Everybody knows how to what what the customers' pain points are. We've pretty much worked on every role across spectrum, across industry. So like we have a ton of you know frameworks around like how to deliver for a client. So it's just about getting the conversations to be able to explain sort of our approach and why we're different and and those things. So that's yeah. So the tool side of it, the training. That's again where sometimes I. Again, default, you go like, oh, I wish, oh, like, they can't do this. But then it's like, how much time do I spend with them to show them exactly how to do it? Yes, yes. Okay, so so it sounds like this is an area that's the growth edge for your team. You said when it's out of network, like the team knows what they're doing. They're hungry. When there's a lead, they see it within our network. They go after it. They know exactly what to do. They know how to pitch the company. They know what our customers' needs are. They're killing it. Um, and this feels like the growth edge. Does that feel accurate to you? Yeah. Yeah. Is this a place where you hold knowledge? Like this is a place where you could get in and get the work that you have not yeah. maybe yet trained up the team on? It's funny because like I've trained them, but like I don't know if I've trained them to the point of true understanding. Got it. I've okay. shown you what to do, but do you understand? And mm-hmm. another thing where, again, a challenge that I've found, which is, again, something that I need to work on is like, I'll be like, that's not going to work. Like, I'll like, look at their, like, that doesn't work. You got to do something different. And it's not as, it's not as motivating. Right. And I think the challenge is, is if like you, you do the same thing over and over again, and you're not, you're not getting anywhere. You don't get any responses. You start to feel deflated. You start to feel like maybe this isn't, maybe I just don't have it. Or maybe this isn't how to do it. Maybe this is never going to work, mm-hmm. you know? So I'm always like, that's, that's like a psychological challenge that people have to overcome mm-hmm. because if you have the, belief that it's going to work and you actually see a bit of reinforcement it makes you even more motivated so that's where again resist like 
coming back to like a re-systemization of it because it sounds weird to talk about it this way because you would think that like, hey, this this is crazy that I don't have this figured out. But there, the, contextually, the reason is, is because we used to just do it all the time. Then we did it for like two years, but the business like grew 100% year over year. Like mm-hmm. I think we, yeah, like three and a half extra revenue, all from not doing those things. And then, and now we're on this new level. level. So now it's like, but now we operate here. How do we get to there? With all the things that I mentioned that have changed, we need to like create a new, a new thing that, that I think system. will get us there. Yeah, a new yeah. system. Yeah. Okay. And so when you say a new system, I heard you say we need to create a new system. Then you were also saying that this is where you and I often connect, right? Is it the training piece? It's like, have I trained them enough? Have I, is this, have I really communicated it to be able to hand this off? Yeah. Yeah. And so are they one and the same? Is that part of the system to you? Yeah. I feel like it, like uh, our loom, our loom library, for example, is like 35 videos all on like the recruiting side of it, like inside and out and like maybe two videos on the sales side of it. Mm -hmm. So even that's just like a pretty obvious, um, it's a pretty obvious like tell of like, you know, where things are at and likely where there needs to be more attention and time focused on. Um, so yeah, that's on me. That makes sense. Um, also it just sounds like a muscle you guys haven't had to use for a bit. So it makes sense that it might've atrophied a little bit. Totally. Totally. The skill, the, the raw skill sets are still there, but the, mm. I guess this, the, um, the style is a little bit outdated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Again, there's so many different ways we could go with this, right. With, in terms of what you're holding on to and what you want to delegate to the team right? You've identified this one area that seems like it's a growth edge for the team, right? Which direction do you want to go? Do you want to look more at what you're holding on to that you want to examine and see if it can be delegated? Or would you like to dig in to like this piece that you've identified that could be trained up more? Yeah. So I feel like as I'm thinking about like growing my, you know, professional career, my experiences, trying to find the challenge to doing something I haven't done and like also trying to grow the business. When I think about doing like, for example, lead generation, like whether I'm using somebody like overseas or what have you, like, Hey, find me 50 of these people. And I'm going to reach out to them or I'm going to reach out to them on LinkedIn, put them in a sequence, like all those things that I've done for so long, I don't have as much of an interest to do it, even though I know it's so important and so critical. So that's a piece and it's such an important piece. And it feels like I generate so many opportunities for the business that it's like, I have to do it. And it sounds better coming from all these things. And I think as I think about the growth of the business and the growth of myself, that's just something that I have to really let go of. And I have to train people to the point where they can do it to a, at the same level. There's no reason why they wouldn't be able to. And then also the way that I think about, like, if I think about purely business development for myself, like I look at it more from like a partnership perspective, right? I have such a big network. There's all, there's, we work with a lot of, you know, different VC partners. Like there's just more strategic ways to think about growing the business that I think I could focus on. Also like more focused on content creation and just putting all that kind of stuff out there. That's more of a magnet towards us rather than us doing all the outbound. But if I could do that and be inspired by that challenge and really focus on that, while that's happening over here, then I think we have a a really good opportunity to take the business to the next level. Um, So that's, that's how I think about it. But as you were talking about this, this feels like it's a how, right? It's um, there's stuff that you do enjoy doing and there's stuff that you're kind of like, Oh, I have to do this again. Right. Like you were talking about, like you can find a consultant, get me these 500 leads, whatever it is. And so it sounds like in your evolution as a leader, part of the how that you get here, whether it's by October or just in general, is just getting really clear on what it is that's like an additive for you, something that you enjoy, where you're you're kind of tapped into um, like your zone of genius, right? The stuff that that is where you shine, uh, and then helping you kind of delegate and decide from there, and be really intentional about the work that you're doing, rather than just falling into the trap that most CEOs fall into, which is, oh, I'll just do it myself. Mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And I think that the, I always default to that. And then 
I just think that the, yeah, there's more energy draining happening or like resistance than I, and it's weird because it shouldn't be there. Then you like have this like sort of guilt towards your own resistance towards it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just a matter of like, you've just done it so many times. And at the end of the day, I feel guilty because like, this is something that we need. I haven't focused enough and allocated enough energy to it. Business is still fine, but it's not fair to me, the biz, like the, the people in the business, like mm -hmm. our opportunity, like, it's like, this is just the piece that we need to nail down. And mm -hmm. I either have to like stop with the delusion that like, I'll be the one to like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, mm -hmm. I gotta like, let, let that go and like properly get someone in that seat that's doing it well. Right. I can do it at the level that I expect essentially. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they do it at the level that you can do it or better ideally. That's the other thing too, is like, I always feel like, or better, like there's better out there for sure. Yeah. Right. Well, so this yeah. is okay. Just to normalize and validate the heck out of where you are right now. This is one of the most common growing pains in startup life because of the fact that you, I don't think we're really all that prepared for that. I've been on that path before and you were literally walking it, but there are moments in time where just like you're evolving as a human in this world, in your own life, your company evolves and your role as a leader evolves and you're getting further away from what you had to do to get the company going in the first place. Right. And you're forming a proper business, like a proper hierarchical structure where you are the leader of maybe you've got two levels initially, and then there's three. Right. And as that grow, as that grows, you get further and further away from being in the trenches like down here doing the day-to-day -day work and you're up here looking at the lay of the land, focusing on the vision, where are we trying to go, right? The stuff that only a CEO can do because leadership, I think at, at the end of the day is really your ability to get results through people, you know, to yeah. guide them and do that. And so, I mean, it's very uh, common growth edge to be experiencing, you know? Um, Part of what I was pulling up earlier, if you're open to me sharing this is, I know we touched on this briefly before, um, we do this a lot at this moment in time with CEOs where it's called an energy audit. And this is something that you can do. We don't have to do it in real time. So you, you would need a little more time than what we've got. So we've got about like 15 minutes left. Um, but the idea is you take a look at your calendar and you, look back over two weeks, right? On like what your average weeks would entail. And you go through, um, you can print it out, which is really fun. Um, and you can use like pens, pencils, whatever, and do it. Or you can just go through and color code on your, cal on your calendar. Um, but the idea is that you're going through each workday, hour by hour, every single um, meeting and task that you have on your calendar and asking yourself, did this give me energy or did I feel depleted at the other, at the other end of it? And so you can color code them so that you can look at the calendar. When you're done, you'll pull back and look at it and see where all the greens are. You see where all the reds are. The trick here is that you can't go neutral. You can't be like, meh, you got to choose. Is it green or is it red? That's important. And to force yourself to make that choice because that ambivalence is not going to help you in the long run. You got to choose green or red. Um, when you're done, the idea is that you write out the list of what all the reds are, and then you can group those, right? Are they one-on-ones? Are they recruiting meetings? Because the idea behind doing this is that by getting a better sense of the stuff that really feeds your soul, the stuff that you actually genuinely enjoy doing, it's usually tied to your zone of genius where you shine, um, you'll start to get a much clearer idea of what you want to hold on to and what you want to make a super concerted effort on to train to train your team train them up teach them how to do it and then ultimately delegate it out um does that sound like something uh sorry that would resonate with you or something you'd want to try yeah no i think it's uh probably a good idea to actually put that structurally together to say this is this brings me energy this doesn't what have you because i just kind of go i just kind of like go i just roll with the punches I don't really no think about, punches. I don't really think about necessarily if it brings energy, it takes away. So I think, 
being conscious and intentional about that would probably open up some insights to certain things that, you know, I want to be doing less of or doing more of. Okay. Um, so you'd be open to doing it. When would you like to do that by? Um, well, if I, if I think about it from like a two week perspective, I'll just monitor the next two weeks and then we can meet in two weeks. Okay. So around, it'll be around the 10th of August. Does that feel realistic to you? you like yeah. It? Yeah, I think so. I think, well, again, we can just like have a touch base point anyways to say, because I'll, I'll maybe, maybe it needs to be longer than that, but we can say, you know, this is what we found in the week. Wait, I'm not sure about these things because I didn't do them, but we'll see yeah. as they come up. Okay. okay. Very good. Is there anything that could block you from doing this exercise? Mm. No, it's myself. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Do you need to do anything to hold yourself accountable to doing it? That's why I have you. Hey, <laughs> wasn't a trick question, but that's a good answer. <laughs> yes. So how about when we meet next, I can check in with you and we can like set an intention to review the energy audit. Does that Perfect. work for you? Yep. Okay. Very good. Um, so what, um, we're going to review to review in our next session. Awesome. Um, did you have any questions about it? I know I went through it really quickly. I'll send over the, the write-up so you can read it. I, I might, I might once I review it, but I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, okay. I'll let you know if I have questions about it. Okay. Sounds good. And we've still got about 10 minutes left. So I think we could still kind of poke at this for a bit and see if there's anything else we want to pull out as an initial first step for you. Um, can I ask a question? This is a combo question slash observation. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like you've, I know because your team is fairly small still, you have a really good sense of where the strengths are, where their weaknesses are. Have you checked in with them to see where they think they could take on more or where they think they could grow? Well, again, in our, in our space, like when you're, I think there's some, some interest for some that they want to do what's called full desk. So like they mm. would find the clients and then mm -hmm. find the candidates. Um, I think there's a general sense of interest as, cause that's a really good growth opportunity for anyone in this industry is like, if you mm -hmm. can do it from a full desk perspective, then you really are kind of hundred percent in control of your outcome because it really is an inputs and outputs business. So if you know how to bring on a client and you know how to service it, or you know how to actually recruit, you know, the world's your oyster when you're okay. only on one side of the equation. So if you're only doing business development, then you're at the mercy of the people that de deliver it, right? So you're not totally in control. Mm -hmm. And if you only are on the delivery side of it, you're at the mercy of someone being able to bring in the opportunities, good opportunities. Mm -hmm. So there's a genuine interest. I think, I think it's a great growth opportunity for everyone. There's three people in the business that um, are currently just doing the recruiting side that would, you know, lean in, lean in more. I think they would be interested mm -hmm. in it. So it's just a matter of like making sure that you allocate that properly because we're so, we're still so busy that like everyone's still fully allocated many of, yeah. much of the time. So they would only really be able to do in the downtime, which again, kind of sick is goes with the flow of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, and it just comes down to like making sure that they they're trained properly. And also many times people think they like the idea of it when in practicality, the practicality of it is taking like a hundred to 200 no's before you even get a, a, a slight opportunity. Yeah. So dealing with that rejection at scale, isn't necessarily, you know, mm -hmm. something that people actually want to go through in, in practice. So that's where, you know, I think giving that opportunity to people, I think is important if they have the skill set, and then really thinking about it from the business perspective of like, maybe that, maybe that isn't the way that we scale. Maybe the way that we scale is just separating the two and just growing like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it the sounds other thing like that that's think, a, good. I was just going to say the other thing that I think is sometimes a challenge in, uh, in the way that the business is today is that like, things are just so great. Like we have great clients, team's great. Like there's, it's like, you want to grow. But you're not sure if you net and and you in order to get there you need to change. But then there's sometimes you get that resistance of like, oh, but things are pretty great. Like, what do we really need to change? What's really going to be the outcome? 
but the last thing that I would want to do is just run a business. That's just like, you know, even if it's great, even if it's like a high margin business. Like I just like, I'm driven by the, by what could be rather than, you know, what is. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like sometimes there's resistance towards making big changes. If it's not going to be that meaningful in the end, you know, yeah. so yeah, that, makes that so could also sense. be a point of resistance too. Yeah. Um, like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, why are we doing this? What we're mm -hmm. doing works really well already. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Um, interesting. Well, it sounds like, so if you do the energy audit, that's going to help get some clarity on what you enjoy doing and what you could potentially hand off by handing off, you're going to know that you're moving toward this goal of a system right? A rinse and repeatable system. You know that you can leave in October and come back to growth or you're setting yourselves up for you to be able to leave in October and come back to growth. God willing, everything works, right? Um, so you've got your side of it as a starting point. There's the team side of the system, like what they see, um, that I'm curious about that you, you've listed out here. Um, is there anything you want to do, any other initial first steps you'd like to take on this front besides doing the energy audit? So I'll just hold this as an accountability thing for when we meet on the 10th as well. Um, <clears throat> there's a tool that I just have started to play around with, which I think is really interesting. And I just, I just need to have that figured out by August 11th which I think I, I think is no problem. I just need to, that's going to be like step one to figure this okay. piece out. So by figuring it out, do you mean you're going to make a decision on whether you're going to use it or are you just, well, yeah, I'll do the, I'll do the two week trial, but in that trial period, I need to actually, cause it's a little bit more complicated. So I just need to figure out exactly where I can, where the value is in it, exactly how to use it. And then if it's uh, like, if it's fully functional and working, then, I can use that to train. This would be a a key point of our, I think, sales tech stack. Uh, if we um, if we do it properly, I think it'll be a really okay. key thing, and that will help us differentiate in the market when we're trying to get in touch with people. Yeah, it sounds like this is a worthwhile endeavor. You deemed it a worthwhile endeavor to get in there, play around with it, do the two week trial figure out where exactly the value is, how exactly you would use it. And if it does make sense to add it to your sales tech stack. Yep. Exactly. Cool. And you don't have that done by the 10. Yep. Love it. Good. Any other first steps that you want to note for yourself? There's probably a conversation that needs to be had with some people from the team about this, about just the intention here. Um, and the time, well, obviously the timeline, but yeah, I find, I feel like everything is just done a little bit like uh, half hazardly or like, it's like, oh yeah, we'll do it this way. And then we like do it for a bit and then we don't stick with it. It's like, yeah, I think there needs to be like a real intention around timelines. Again, doing like, uh, like even workshops, like a weekly workshop for two hours. And it's like, these are the mandatory people that need to be there. These are the optional if you want to learn, right? The fact that we're not doing that is like, again, it's like one of those things where it's like, you just, you know what needs to be done, but then you're just like, I don't know, you just do everything else but that thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that's, that just, that's just me getting in my own way though. Yeah. So um, when do you, if it ain't your own way, we all do that, welcome. Uh, you're human. Uh, so when do you want to have that conversation with the team? Um, Mon I'll, do it on, I'll do it on our all hands on Monday. Okay. So the 31st? Yeah. Okay. Um, and what specifically are you going to, uh, I'm just going to say, Hey, listen, this is the goal. This is the situation. This is how I plan on doing it. This is um, the opportunity, this is whoever wants to be, whoever really wants to go deep here. This is how we're going to do it. This is when we're going to meet. Um, okay. Okay. and I might, the other thing is like, I might, um, 
again, I might, this is like where the thing is like, you can always figure it out yourself, or this might be the opportunity to really look externally and say, who's out there doing it? Um, should I, maybe I'll be reaching out to, maybe I'll reach out to some people that I know that are like, you know, pushing sales right now uh, that might have a different approach and how they're doing it and what their, what their stack is and like how their, what their whole flow setup is, right? Like all these things. Mm -hmm. um, so who are successfully pushing sales right now? Yes. Excellent. And if somebody, again, you never know, right? In those conversations that might uncover someone who's like, I'm kind of done selling software. I want to do something that's a little bit more high touch or something like okay. that. A consultation. Yeah. Like, oh, interesting. Maybe unlock yeah. a salesperson that way. Okay. So it sounds like it's, it's a balance of listening to what you know works for your team, right? And works for Jacker. And then also just testing the waters and seeing if there's anything out there that you could bring in that would be additive to what you're yeah. trying to do with your team. Exactly. Yep. Very cool. Very good. So then does that feel, I know this is a big meaty thing. That's a big general goal for you that we've been working on for a while of, of how to evolve the company but for today. Does this feel like it's complete as a starting point? Yeah. Again, I think it's just more so about what we've done is like, we've set sort of a timeline that we should have mm -hmm. these things in place by and, mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing and how we're doing it. And the why is because the why is an attempt for me to try to get to the next level as a business, but also do so in a way that's going to be long-term sustainable rather mm -hmm. than, uh, you know, cause again, at some point, I, again, everything's been fought. Like it's great. Like it's a great, we have a great business. It's, it, it literally is the perfect vehicle and has been the perfect vehicle, not only from like a lot of people in the business, but like for myself and everything like that. So it's not like things need to really like change. It's just more so when I really think about my own involvement in my own, where am I bottlenecking? Cause I definitely am when I don't need to be where, mm -hmm. where am I losing focus and like losing interest as well. Mm -hmm. Right. In certain things. Um, and where do I get the highest energy? Uh, and how do I keep involved to be only doing those high energy things, which a lot of times would be talking to clients and what have you. Um, and, uh, if we can, solve this piece of the puzzle, uh, in a, in a kind of like a, again, a long-term fashion, then at that point, I'll have more confidence about everything where it's like that part's taken care of and that part doesn't require me to really go after, you know what I'm saying? Cause then that's where I think it's a, it, it's not as, it's like, oh, I just gotta, I always gotta come back and boop, back up. So, yep, exactly. And so that'll support your long-term goal of where it is that you're trying to go and where you're trying to take the company. Okay, cool. Well, I want to be mindful of the time. We're pretty much at time. So would love yeah. to check in with you just briefly. Um, if you could just reflect back on the session today, um, was overall, how do you feel about it? Like one couldn't have been any worse, five couldn't have been any better. Well, I think, with your vibes. yeah, I think I'll, um, what I shared is not as tan. It's not as tangible, right? There's more like kind of like higher, like you said, meaty, higher level things. So I think it's, I would, I'll give it a four because I think it's better than just like a meh, right? Which would be a three. And it's not quite a five because we, I, it can only be a five if it's a two sided offer of like something very tangible or like, Hey, I'm struggling with this. This is what's on my mind. Right. Jay, thank you so much for being game to do this and just swimming around with me in a more public setting. Um, this just, it's always a joy to get time with you and to dig into things. So I'm really excited to hear how the energy audit goes and I'm looking forward to seeing what that reveals. And I want to know how that conversation goes to the team and what comes out of it. Cool. So, um, so yep. thank you so much. If you're interested in working with a Shari method coach, please DM at ADA M E. C O U R T on Twitter or check out masharimethod.com or email us at coach at masharimethod.com.